So hi everyone, uh, my name is Ricky Trigallo. I'm part of Diablo, I'm uh, in CTO group and I'm responsible for virtualization area with Diablo. So um, how the MCS devices are integrated in the hardware? So from the memory uh, controller point of view, the MCS device is just like another RDIM, as uh, Jerome uh, said before. We represent ourselves as four gigabyte RAM, but technically we don't really have this capacity. So in order to function in the, in the system, we need to disable the memory uh, test. So one of the changes that we want our BIOS to change is uh, to disable the memory test, but you also want to know where the physical location of those devices. So for that, we need to create an entry in the ACPI table. So when the driver manages those devices, he knows what their physical locations, how many devices there are in the system, and so on. Now, when the driver is being loaded by the OS, it will represent those devices storage. So from the application point of view, this is just like another storage. The user can create a, a data store from it. It can use it as a swap device. The application has no change. VM will see it as a data store or any, like any other device. Now, if we're looking at the I.O. request, the application sends an I.O. request to the driver. The driver will use a CPU uh, inline command. So it will create a mem copy inside the MCS memory space. It will embed it into the MCS protocol. It's 64-byte uh, 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 command. And if that's a right command, since we have a, a power controller mechanism in our drive, we send a knowledge back to the application. So even before the, the, the data is in the flash, it's a persistent for the user. So because we have our own uh, power, uh, uh, power controller or power failure uh, mechanism. Now, if it's a read, we want to fetch the read the command from the flash. So we are using, in our case, uh, the SanDisk Guardian uh, controller uh, software, and we are fetching the data from the, the flash device. Ricky, I've got a quick question. Sure. Um, how does that work? The, how does the power side work? Because I'm looking I, for a super cap. <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting, like, like normally, you'd have like a, a battery or a super cap on there yeah. that would. There is a capacitor. So there's, there's, there's yellow or orange squares on there? These things? Yeah, those are okay. capacitors. Yeah, th those are capacitors for uh, power failure, in case of power how failure. Store the power, how long will it keep? Enough to flash the data into the run. All right, okay, yeah. fine. You don't need more than that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it has enough, t enough time to flash all the data if, in case sure. there is a power failure. Thank you. Any question before we... So, okay. So how the device is integrated in the system in terms of software? Uh, we, device, we divide the system into three sectors, as if three uh, categories. There is the hardware, the kernel space, and the user space where the applications that the VM are running. Now, in the hardware, we don't have any change in the motherboard. Our firmware is running in, in, the, in the chip and communicating with the um, um, NAND through NVM uh, controller. In our case, it's SanDisk uh, controller. There is a change to be done in the BIOS, as we mentioned before, three major changes. First is to disable the memory test so we can function. Once we disable the memory, the memory test, basically those devices can be loaded in the system as long as there is a driver. The three other changes are for um, working properly in the system and to be able to manage them is the entry in the ACPI table because it's a storage device. And the third one is to reserve a space uh, for the driver, for the structure, uh, to be working in the uh, memory address map, physical address map. Our driver is a kernel driver. We have uh, drivers for Windows, Linux, and of course, ES6. In ES6, it's fully IOVP support, uh, uh, certified. We're also working to certify it for VSAN and VFRC. Uh, the driver is communicating with the application through the SCSI uh, stack. Um, yeah, and there is, um, you can use it as RDM, you can use it as a data store, and you can use it also for a swap device. We have uh, our own management software to support all the trim or uh, smart commands, uh, and it, that's a SIM-based um, SIM uh, application. I see an error between application and kernel driver without using the, the OS stack. What type of integration is there? 
So a, a, from the kernel driver straight yeah. to an application, or an application soliciting the driver directly. With that data path. Because usually an application just talks to the operating system. The operating system will talk to the hardware through the driver. Yeah, through the driver. I see an arrow going from application straight to the driver. Yeah, so the, the management application, yeah, that, that, that's a seam it will go through the driver. Oh, that's just a management component. Yes, oh, okay. it's a management component, yeah. Take my database and say, put your object layout yeah. uh, directly on this uh, yeah. without traversing a black stack. Yes, no, so it's, it's a management, it co go through the driver. <laughs> Not, not yet, but it, actually at Flash Memory Summit, we introduced a new technology called exactly. NanoCommit mm -hmm. that uh, is actually more of a direct interface. So it's something for future technologies. For it's been one of the issues that's coming up with a lot of the high-performance Flash now is that it goes so fast, but we've got so many layers of cruft in between with file system, legacy file system structures, it means we can't push it to its limit. And here we have such a huge potential limit that it would be, I mean, it's so high. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're interfacing at like CPU cache line granularity when we actually talk to you know, the main memory and the CPU, and we're abstracting that up as a block device, but there's other things that we can do because of where we're so, so we can expect more and more interesting things. Yes. <laughs> and so now I will pass to Daniel. Hi, I'm Daniel with uh, VMware. I'm a senior end user computing architect in the CTO office, and uh, I do a lot of work on our VIEW product, that's VMware's VDI product, uh, and one of the areas I focus is user experience. Actually, uh, you know, I've been working in this area for a long time, particularly in storage designs, ways to accelerate I.O., and so I was very interested to learn about the Diablo memory channel storage technology and how it can impact our user experience. So one of the, one of the things we've learned uh, as we look at user experience is users actually don't uh, score all the things in their desktop experience equally. Sort of, uh, in fact, if you think about how users perceive things, that they really focus on the things they initiate and have to wait for. There's many things going on in the in the uh, in the desktop, and not all of them are equal. So, our brains fil filter things, and if we expect a long delay, you know, imagine you have an hour commute, you won't notice an hour in four minutes. But if you expect an eight-second login and it's four minutes in eight seconds, you're sure going to notice that. So there's, there's sort of an interplay between perception and uh, how regular the response is. So in a VDI context, you want to give users a, a both a snappy user experience for the things they initiate. You also want to avoid large fluctuations uh, day to day. And so we look at the storage subsystem to deliver that kind of experience. Things that users initiate that last, let's say, longer than 30 seconds, uh, users are prone to start multitasking. So there again, they don't really care. Even if that task generates tons of I.O., I.O. latency doesn't matter for those class of events because you should just start multitasking. Events that are very short, um, sort of let's say less than a second, they are kind of in the noise. You just won't really care there either. But in this kind of magic window between, say, 2 seconds and 30 seconds, users are watching. And that's where uh, we have an opportunity to accelerate uh, the user's perception of quality on the desktop experience. So if you look at this diagram here, it's kind of a flow chart of a typical desktop lifecycle. You see three classes of events. The uh, green events, these are the user-initiated events. I call them focus events because they hold the user's focus specifically because the user initiated them. They are too short to multitask, and so the user is essentially watching. The brain is timing. We have a lot of these blue events, as you see, such as uh, boot, profile update, uh, AV scans, software distribution, um, other sorts of events that can be very I.O. intensive, but they don't matter to the user at all because they're background tasks. They don't get scored. You also have these multitask friendly events in red, file downloads, perhaps large print jobs, uh, log, even log off event. Again, User doesn't care about them, they're already doing something else. It's these magic green events that really matter. And you realize these are actually a sort of a relatively modest percentage of the overall I.O. burden uh, in the VDI desktop, but they're the ones that matter. So if we think about these specific events, we get more insight into what really matters in the storage subsystem. Uh, so one thing that we observe is in these green events, these focus events, they tend to be spikes of serialized I.O. And so to complete the green event, you have to execute a quick spike of I.O. that could be typically serialized reads or writes. 
and the user will not time completion of the event until the entire sequence of IOs have completed. So summarizing these, these focus events, what we've learned as we study BDI user experience, they're not typically CPU bound. They're very short in duration. They're not typically maxing CPU. Uh, we also know that they're typically in the 500 to say roughly 12,000 IO streams. And we also notice they typically tend to be either a stream of reads or a stream of writes. They tend to be unidirectional. But they are sort of the definitive IO pattern for these green events, which in turn are what users perceive. This is a great slide talking about VDI experience. Good job there. Thank you. So actually one of our VMware partners at Linus Computing is also focused in this area. And uh, I worked with them on other projects and they produced, uh, I have to give them great credit for this uh, graph. They have some also, also some uh, virtual storage acceleration technology. But anyway, they produced this graph that they showed in the, in, the, uh, in the desktop experience certain sorts of events. You see, for example, PowerPoint uh, launch, Internet Explorer, Firefox. And you see that these are very sharp spikes. Let's take a look at the Chrome one here. It's, it's actually, in terms of time, it's timing. It's a very short duration of Look event. at Windows Update. That's <laughs> the biggest spike. Yeah, Windows Update is large, uh, but, but Windows Update is a background task. What was called like one of those blue tasks. Uh, this is a green focus event because the user has initiated this and they're waiting. It's clearly too short to multitask. But this is exactly the class of focus event that matters. Now, if you notice this one, uh, the Chrome launch, it's 3200 IOs at peak. So what, well, so what we want to do is um, complete that focus event as quick as possible. So uh, it's actually a bit more than 3200. You would technically measure the surface area under the spike. So, but for the purpose of this argument, we just say 3200. Now, if we look at the different types of storage systems that could service this event, let's imagine you're on a traditional hard drive, um, potentially a, a NAS with uh, the spindles, maybe you have 10 millisecond latency. Okay, you have cache, I know that, but for the, for the argument here, that could be 32 seconds. Worst it's, case, it could, it could happen like that. Worst case, yeah, if it's really flooded and the cache is not working well. So let's say you move down now to this amazing new class of flash arrays, extreme IO, pure, these sorts of things. They typically have average under load latencies of 1.5 milliseconds. So here, the event could still, in theory, take uh, four or five seconds to complete. As you move to a local PCIe bus card, uh, your fusions of the world, these, these under load, these, uh, these cards typically will deliver like, say, half millisecond latencies. So here you're dropping the focus event execution down to 1.6 seconds. But if you go to memory channel storage, we're seeing latencies 50, 40, 50 microseconds, even with the ESX software stack. We know that native device can do five microsecond random write commits and roughly 100 microsecond reads. So sort of as a blend, you know, when you launch Chrome, there's some reads and writes as it sets up. So just blended figure, 50 microseconds. Now, obviously, the focus event, which the user's brain is timing to assess quality, you see such a dramatic range there. And it's all based on IO latency. So it's not based on the amount of IOPS. We don't need a million IOPS for VDI. We need great IO quality consistently low IO latency and low fluctuations. So we did additional testing between, uh, with VMware partnering with Diablo and we used our view planner uh, test suite, which is a knowledge worker simulation. And we did some interesting tests. We actually deliberately constrained the VM's memory allocation from a gigabyte down to 512 and then down to 256. Uh, the view planner working set itself is something like 600 megabytes. So when we constrained it to 512, we were deliberately inducing substantial paging on top of the uh, memory channel storage. We wanted to look at how the view planner scores came out, what sorts of average times, and what sort of uh, standard deviations, importantly, that we got from the task completions. So here what you see on the left, in the green, uh, that's, that's the average time for the task completion at 512. So there was a lot of paging going on. You see that uh, in the PCIe, the same exact test, you get some higher averages, a bit more fluctuation. But perhaps even the biggest story here is the blue, where you see the standard deviation of task completion. Even under heavy I.O. load, which was related to the paging, 
we got very low standard deviations. So we got sort of immunity uh, to performance fluctuations, even under heavy loads. In contrast to that, what we saw in PCI is under the same very heavy I.O. loads, we had a lot higher fluctuations, more erratic uh, execution of I.O., which translates in the user experience to more variance in those focus events that we just talked about. So for that reason, because of the parallelism uh, that, that memory channel storage offers, it's a great fit for VDI. It gives users a fantastic uh, user experience, very consistent. The test was done with uh, full clones or using uh, Diablo only for the parent partition? Uh, no, we had all the clones. Full uh, clones? Uh, that, well, we were using link clones, I think, on the specific test, mm -hmm. but the link clone files were all on top of a, a, a memory channel storage based data store mm -hmm. on top of the VMware. In, in this uh, uh, graph here, too, is sort of the aggregate score. You see that not only was the average lower, but it was more consistent in terms of the overall. Um, we call the group B, uh, group B, group A scores. So we, we just saw a generally more robust I.O. performance where it really counts. So summarizing, user experience is critical to VDI. The number one issue that VDI has struggled with over, the, let's say, the last five years, and I've been in, in this area a long time, it's I.O. latency. It's, it's the ability of this backing storage system under peak loads or anomaly loads to deliver a consistent experience. It, there's a, sometimes people think it's about more IOPS. It's not really about more IOPS as much as it is about low latency I.O. So summarizing what we found, if you look at SSDs, PCI-based flash, and of course memory channel storage, we get the lowest latencies by far on memory channel storage. We get more consistent latency than SSDs and PCI. That's that standard deviation. And of course, we get high IOPS from both PCI and memory channel storage, but that's not adequate to, to really uh, provide the best VDI experience. You can get a high IOPS from many SAN arrays, but you can't, can't get the latency under a certain floor. So that's why we feel it's, it's a unique technology. It's a great fit for virtual desktops, and we're pretty uh, excited about the potential here. And about availability, what uh, do you think? Uh, VSAN, Virtual SAN as uh, an uh, aggregation layer. Exactly. To, so yeah. we, are, we are doing a lot of uh, integration testing right now with memory channel storage as the cache layer in mm -hmm. Virtual SAN. Okay. And we're also doing some, some tests pairing that with uh, TLC, large form factor SSDs in the vSAN data tier. Oh. So we're pairing a small amount of very high grade low latency flash with uh, six or seven large terabyte factor what you might consider consumer grade SSDs, 40, 50 cents a gig. The reason we're doing that is vSAN as an architecture offloads intensive random writes up to the cache tier where we're executing on memory channel storage. So it's a great, great pairing. And Ricky's going to talk some more about that testing work. Does, Can I, sorry, does MCS um, still have the same benefits that, uh, as it has here once you start uh, using layers of data protection on top? Because this is you, you, here, you're just going straight to the yeah. device with no data protection. What happens if you add mirroring or RAID or anything that does data, prote data protection? Yeah, I mean, as you as you guess, there's uh, you introduce more CPU. That adds latency. Of course, it adds more software stack latency. And right now in, in VMware, uh, we are looking very closely at ways to reduce that. We haven't had to deal with in the traditional storage systems that we've interfaced with, we haven't had to deal with such low latency devices. Yeah. And there's things that are being fundamentally rewritten in the platform for coming releases that will... Because I, I, I reckon that the impact of the software latency on that level will not, ha will not give you all the benefits you, you're paying for by having the lowest latency device in... in so it's a, it's a great question. It, it does have a retarding effect and it does provide some masking to, to the pure benefits that would be available mm -hmm. from the device itself. So, so even would you still it, benefit from yes. using MCS over the good PCIe? Yep, yeah, substantially. We've got a lot of vSAN tests we've done with few planners. So even with the software masking, we still see substantially better uh, fluctuation patterns. So lower standard deviation on performance with our vPlanner test suite. Uh, we don't get in close to those five microsecond commit times because no, 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 no. there's no way, but, but we do still see substantially superior performance in certain test scenarios 
over uh, PCI, particularly when you're, you're loading lots of I.O. Uh, and you want to keep the, that low I.O. latency pattern that is critical to those focus events. We see it outperform PCI consistently. Okay. But in all cases, that overhead is standard. If I'm doing software level mirroring for RAID 1, if it's going to, to Diablo or it's going to PCI, that overhead will be relatively static. I mean, it's a cost I have to pay somewhere. It's a cost you have to pay. It factors into the total latency uh, you know, path. Um, but the, the rest of it is the hardware piece. And so you pick up the benefits on the portion of the total stack. You know, maybe it's like 50-50, um, 50% 50, 50 software stack. The rest could is the hardware. And we're focusing here on improving the hardware piece. We're focusing in, in VMware engineering over the next few years and really dropping the software stack down for this class of device. We are definitely committed to com uh, better supporting these very low latency architectures. Can I ask you to back up a couple of slides real quick, please? The one before this. Yeah, so um, you're comparing it here to PCIe. Um, do you have any similar bars for um, SSD and for spinning media. I'm just thinking, you know, if those numbers are like three floors, ab three stories above us, yeah. then the difference here is actually not very much. It looks a lot because you're just comparing two things. But then if spinning media scale. is like a thousand times higher, then suddenly the difference here is kind of like, nah. Yeah, but, but, so what, what we saw in Buplena, in Buplena score, that we saw that with the PCIe, as long as you give enough memory for the VMs, the PCIe is under the threshold and the PCIe on the Buprena score, but once you reduce the memory so and you start paging, score. yeah, the, the score is above the threshold, so it doesn't even pass the I, I get score. that. This, this is sort of a good way. If you look at this, mm -hmm. 0.6 versus 0.9, say a 30% so delta, this particular score is, is from, I believe, our, our group A. Uh, which is sort of CP, typically what you would consider CPU bound activities. What we saw is even for the what we think of as CPU bound activities in our view planner suite, the presence of the lower latency storage actually helped execution of CPU tasks because there's still a lot of OS wait states that occur. And so having very low latency storage even helps CPU bound tasks. And not by a fraction, but by 30%. This is, uh, this is actually you know, a lot better user experience, 30% better user experience. So, um, you know, where would a hard drive fit? Maybe a hard drive is like two or whatever, but in terms of percentage improvement, it's, it's substantial. But it's 30% improvement on something that the market already perceives as awesome. Um, like, P wow. yeah, PCI flash it's it, it's is... more than good enough for most people. Yeah. So, so yeah. It, it just looks to me like it's maybe a little, a little bit niche, like really extreme performance. Whereas the, the PCI on its own versus spinning media is like the difference there is so much that everybody would just be happy. Well, I would agree with that, but in my, my, my perception is that over the last few years, mm -hmm. users are less uh, accepting <laughs> of these bad user experiences of, you know, PC yesteryear. They were working on flash tablets and smartphones, and that defines the user experience expectation envelope has sort of really ramped up. And so those old designs are just almost... You, know, you can force. You can only force users to use. It. Yeah, but to to Nigel's point, I don't think they're unhappy with a PCIe no, flash uh, architecture today. I think they're quite happy with that. So, how much added value is bringing it that much down? What's the extra cost? Am I saving well, somewhere say, else? The are there other values then yeah, making the people that are already happy even happier? Well, our goal is always to push the user experience forward for a simple mm -hmm. reason, is that we know uh, competing uh, frameworks, end-user computing devices, tablets, they will keep pushing it forward. Every smartphone that Apple brings out has a faster processor. They're like, it's the A8. It's even lower latency. It's 64 lanes. And, and you know, you're like, does it really matter? But you know what? I just got the iPhone 6. Wow, it really matters. I can notice it immediately in my user experience. So when you drive latency out, either at the compute level or at the storage stack level, you do notice. I notice, I can tell the difference when I go to like a RAM disk, for example, from PCI or, you know, users will notice. The other benefit is MCS is not more expensive than PCI. So that was the next question. Uh, yeah. What's the impact on cost versus volume? Well, I'll tell you the difference between a PCIe that is, in, in my experience, fast enough 
how much more expensive would an MCS solution be? So here's the way we look at this. Uh, in vSAN, you, you only need the cash layer to be 5 to 10 percent of the total capacity, so you don't need a lot of capacity. If you try to buy a PCI device with a low cost per gig, uh, you need to go to a very large device, multi terabyte. If you go with, let's say, the leading, with the leading brands and you want to only get 400 gigs, you typically find you're paying a lot more per gig. Uh, the, the manufacturers of those leading solutions are uh, typically serving larger capacities. So for a vSAN design, we, where we don't need a lot of capacity and we want to buy in small 200, 400 gig atomic chunks mm -hmm. without sacrificing on cost per gig, but having best of breed uh, performance, MCS offers that. It's actually getting more and more challenging to get that from PCI. Well, that so price per unit could be the same, but you have less volume. Yeah, that's a, and yeah. And what I'll add to that is, you know, as Diablo, we don't give the prices. We don't sell the end product. But the way the OEMs have been pricing it, they've been pricing it very aggressively and really kind of commensurate in some cases less from a dollars per gig perspective than PCIe based SSDs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is because again, we're able to leverage 19 nanometer flash to get you know the endurance that we need. So from a from a bomb cost, you know, pure you know ASICs and everything flash perspective, there's no disadvantage that we have. We have better performance. But from a costing perspective, you know, we're very much okay, and the pricing is very aggressive so far. So, okay. but you will see a sing each dim like a single SSD uh, enable storage, mm -hmm. so multiple disks, yeah, multiple lines, or you can read them together. Mm -hmm. Because uh, on Visan, actually, you can have only one SSD. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but, in, but have, in this version of uh, but, Visan, but we have a RAID capability. Okay. And okay. once we RAID them in the driver, yeah. we you see single. them as a single Perfect. device. Okay. And I'll, I'll show that later. You Wait, said you could rate that in the driver, not yeah. just at the software layer. So that yeah. could be just, I mean, like the, the HPA that doesn't exist is handling that uh, mirroring. Yes. Ah. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it. Okay. Go steal it from there. Okay. So why, why, why does it happen? Why, why are we better than uh, at other traditional storage? So if we're looking at the IO trip, uh, on hypervisor, we divide it into three categories. First is the guest OS uh, latency and kernel latency. We are going through the SCSI stuff, so we are, go we are uh, impacting the kernel latency, or we are being impacted by the kernel latency. But where we are focusing is the device latency. Now, if we are looking at the, any uh, local device, the <coughs> device latency is, is uh, combined by the driver and the HPA where the device is located because the IO trip has to go out from the memory channel, it has to go through the HPA. If we're working uh, with a, with array, with an all flash array, for example, we have to go all the way down to the array, so through the fabric and the array storage uh, port. Now, in the memory channel storage, our, our driver is our IO controller because the, 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 the data will never leave the memory channel, either if it's write or read. So the entire device latency is our driver. And, uh, and that's why specifically for, especially for a write command, the, the driver, the, the device latency is about five microseconds. So MCS said for uh, virtualization, uh, it's a good fit. Uh, for data store, local data store, in case of uh, paging, uh, as uh, uh, Daniel mentioned before, it's not that we recommend users to reduce the memory, but in case of, because we are running on top of hypervisor and we are impact, every VM will be impacted by other VMs, in case of peaks, in case of uh, memory over committing, there might be a case of uh, VM paging and we want to make sure that the user experience will not be impacted in these cases. It's also a good, uh, a good uh, fit for uh, swapping devices, either as a swap data store or a has host uh, case swapping. As I uh, mentioned earlier, the big driver is uh, IOVP certified. You can find it in the HCL uh, pro uh, product. Uh, and it's a very good fit for vSAN. We are testing a lot uh, of the various of the applications with vSAN, with a, a flash here as a entire uh, for, for VDI or for, as for a future uh, uh, where the market is taking us to all-flash support, we believe that 
for databases, virtualized database, it's a good fit uh, for all uh, MCS devices that we store. So, as I, we already uh, mentioned before, we have our own RAID capabilities in the driver. Since in Linux or, or, or Windows, uh, you can native uh, OS, you can create a RAID set on the OS level. The VMware doesn't allow that or doesn't have this capability. On the software, uh, we created our own RAID capabilities in our device, so the, the user can manually decides how many devices, and it's unlimited by the, the driver, how many devices can be aggregated together to a Stripe volume. And uh, when the, the, the hypervisor will, will see this device, it will see, he will see it as a single LAN. So even though in, in vSAN there is, as you mentioned, the vSAN as a single device for a cache, a capacity of cache uh, tier on the disk group, if, we, uh, if the user wants to have more devices or what, uh, wants to have flexibility, he can uh, with the MCS uh, RAID. When the OS will write or read uh, to the LAN, our driver will break it to uh, 4K chunks, that's our default uh, stripe size. Uh, again, it's, it's, uh, it's also configurable, depends on the uh, application uh, uh, behavior. And, and then it will write or read in parallel. So in case of read, we are leveraging the, the, the amount or the, the number of the controller. And in case of write, we are leveraging, or end read, we are leveraging the new architecture and uh, the memory. Uh, is it striping only, or is there also a mirroring option? So Would it make sense? That's the second question in that. Would it make sense <laughs> to do mirroring, to do data protection on your MCS? Yes. So for, for, the, for the current release, it's only Stripe. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, uh, for resiliency and vSAN, we will recommend to use uh, m uh, multiple uh, dat uh, data dis as, um, disk groups in the host. For future releases, we will support red time. Uh, red one, red time. Yes, we'll go after So your Stripe at the moment, is that single parity or double parity? It's single parity. Okay. Um, and you can do that in the driver for ESXi. Can you do that in the driver for Linux and Windows as well, or do you have to use that? On, on Linux and, and Windows, we have it only oh. on the OS level. On, on Linux, uh, so for, for the RAID capabilities in Linux, you can do the RAID 0, and IBM will have the RAID 1 capability as a unique feature. Okay. As the mirror of the yeah. So if you, if you look at the IBM and the SanDisk versions of the product, there are some differences in the capabilities. IBM has something called Right Now, which is a new capability that makes for ultra, ultra low latency, I'll say, because we're already entering this <laughs> ultra, ultra low. And they also have what they call, uh, well, I think they just call it mirroring capability, so it's very it's unique to Is that in the driver? In the driver. It's in the driver. Okay. Any, any more questions on the RAID? So, okay, everything is nice uh, in theory, uh, where we'll go uh, down to the testing environment. So we were testing uh, against PCIe. In this case, we used IoDrive uh, Fusion IO, uh, IoDrive 800 gig, and we wanted to test with uh, half of the capacity on the flash tier. So VMware recommends to use about 10% on the flash tier. We wanted to go down to see uh, what the user or what the TCO, the VM TCO uh, benefits if we are reducing, uh, if we can reduce the capacity on the flash. So we were we rated to 200 and against uh, 1800, and we created one disk group. We had the seven terabyte on the data tier. Uh, we wanted to have uh, a, a large bandwidth on, on the data tier. We used the uh, HDD drives in this case, and we uh, used the, the view planner um, uh, benchmark for VDI. Uh, Aggressive users, we wanted to see how the users will impact it if they are running fast. We want to see what's their uh, focus um, event uh, uh, experience, what they're experiencing fo focus event operations. And uh, we, uh, we measured uh, against one disk group on three hosts. Just to, to go here, because downsizing the flash capacity volume, right? It, how are you able to decide the working set is one-fourth of what you can have on the other side? 
I mean, or is this just an arbitrary choice that well, like the 800, we should be able to do it for less expensive on the other side? So, if 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 you are decide that the working set is so much smaller, aren't you going to have a lot of I/O that lands on disk more than you would have on the PCIe? Yeah, it's handicapped tested in the scenario. I think it's to 400 gig versus 800. So the PCI test in theory has, has a big advantage in this test scenario. If it's double the cache size, mm -hmm. you should mm -hmm. see better scores. That's sort of... That's yeah. Uh, I think we did test that way because of the limitations of the available yeah. hardware. Yeah, hardware. Uh, you, you had two 200 gigs of... The, yeah, you, you cannot <laughs> proficient how much... I mean, in, 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 in this one, you can either assign the entire drive, the entire yeah. PCIe mm -hmm. for the disk group or none. You cannot, have, you cannot use yeah, product. Didn't have a small so we wanted really to see mm -hmm. if the user really needs the 800 or it can use less than that. And if you wipe the floor with them and you've got half, then it looks exactly. 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 Yeah, that's that's just about to say, yeah. yeah. Less than yeah. cash yeah. like that. Well, so yeah. We don't know how to test it. <coughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. let's see how the testing out. <laughs> So how the things came up? <laughs> so uh, we were uh, we, uh, in this graph. We filtered out all the non-focused events. We wanted to see how the focused events are um, are uh, uh, impacted. Uh, that's a completion time on Group B IO uh, focused events, and uh, especially on the video open, <laughs> we see a, a, a better results. So. We, we, the, the PCIe was under the threshold, uh, definitely under the th threshold, the threshold was 6 uh, on Group B, uh, but on, on uh, MCS devices we were about the 4, four, uh, four seconds for score B. So this was with 250 desktops, right? Yes. We Did were you do any top. tests with more desktops on the same? We we uh, that that's our first results. We did we did t test with more desktop desktop, but but we tested with TST, uh, TLC uh, disk drive, uh, and it al it also uh, impacted in, in the CPU. So in this case, we used a Sandy Bridge. If we go with the Ivy Bridge, we can go away more than that. So that that's the we we were using with the ratio VM uh, core ratio was one one six six VMs per core. You know, your planner tends to saturate this, the whole CPU to 100% in yeah. this test, and so actually in real-world conditions where you have more CPU headroom, uh, these, the spread here could be even wider yeah. because sometimes uh, what's holding back the performance is really CPU availability. Yeah, your bottleneck is not the flash at this point. Yeah, we're looking at other test methodologies uh, that, that test at a lower CPU threshold and um, sort of focus even more on, on these user perception events. We're, we're doing some work in that area. An eight socket system. Well, the planner is, is uh, a great benchmark tool, but there's uh, sometimes it, there's things we can do to tune it mm -hmm. to, to illuminate some of these differences better. Uh, but uh, not, not only the, the, the completion time is important, but also the standard deviation, we want to see what's the predictable, how the results are predictable. Uh, and this is this area, the MCS also uh, wins uh, against the PCA. We saw that the PCA is, uh, is good, but the standard deviation, it, it fails uh, uh, badly in comparison with the MCS uh, devices for score B. And that's with double the cache size, keep in mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure. So uh, we are doing some testing now with uh, two-layer flash, like we alluded to earlier. vSAN 1.0 today doesn't officially support that. They, they only officially support hard drives in the data tier, but in the CTO office we get to test uh, unsupported things. And so what we wanted to do was look at what's, what the future holds in terms of pairing different grades of flash and using vSAN's architecture to, to uh, allow uh, the, the ability to use lower cost media in the data tier by sort of sheltering it from intensive writes in cache tier. That's what we call the two-tier flash strategy. Um, and I said, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry, can you just back up one slide really quick? I'm so sorry about this. Yeah, right, yeah. so is this, the, is this the score of the MCS versus the PCI 
flash or is this the, the overall score of the system? No, it's the score of the MCS uh, VS PCIe for score B in standard deviation. It's the whole system. It's the whole system. system. It's the experience. Yes, it's the experience right. okay. of, the, of the users. Okay. Yeah, this is also impacted by things like CPU frequencies, yeah. CPU saturation levels, memory bus speed, everything. You know, this is the final score output. You know, we clearly show an advantage here that it's sustained across many test sets, but it's possible that we could even get more advantage in different test scenarios. But it, it's just demonstrative of, of the. Uh, I'm just making sure that, because you know, when we used to look at disk drive tests, the bigger the drive, the more it does, so the slower it is. And I'm just making sure because there was double the, the PCI flash versus the MCS that you weren't making it do more and then saying, hey, it's slower, but it's doing twice as much. Do you know what I mean? But this is the overall system score. Well, in a VSAN context, the more cache you have, you have, you have much better read performance. Yeah. Usually because more of the, the reads are theory coming from cache writes, uh, you've got this stuff going down to the data tier. Um, no, that's, that's cool, I'm happy now. Okay, so let's, we're low on time here, so we're going to keep forging ahead. So the, in the two-tier flash architecture, what a, what a very promising design for, yeah, it looks like, is, is uh, using uh, MCS in the vSAN cache tier, and using what would traditionally be considered consumer-grade flash in the data tier. Uh, now there's sort of that initial enterprise reaction, like, ah, oh, we can't use TLC, it's, sent, it's consumer grade. But um, even though the write endurance is substantially lower on these class of devices, say 1.2 writes per day, the way vSAN is writing to them is in very large 128k chunks, typically sort of oriented sequentially uh, and asynchronously each stage from cache tier. Um, in contrast, a lot of random write activity is all going to get committed on the MCS device, and if you write multiple times onto the same block, it will just stay on the cache tier or the stage constantly all the time. So we're sheltering this tier substantially on the, on the write path, and on the read path, you know, uh, good performance coming from TLC, certainly on par with MLC. So you know, vSAN in this type of design is being used to uh, get more leverage out of this class of device, or use it in a way that might not be viable if you had to put the enterprise workload directly uh, on, the, on the TLC and have them handle the rights. The benefits, we get best of breed performance, we get um, uh, low cost, 40, 50 cents a gigabyte a day on, on this class of device, and we avoid what I call the latency cliff. So what is a latency cliff? It's when you fall off the cache tier and you send, go to a hard drive, your individual desktop today could land on a single hard drive because the vSAN is object-based storage, so it'll, it'll, put, it'll strike your VMs across the group, but it won't strike them across the hard drives in the data tier. You can, you can alter that, thing, can you? There's you can put a strike right? policy, but you can't guarantee where they land. You could be striking yeah, no, across could, hosts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you get more throughput I.O., but you don't get lower latency I.O. Yeah. So the issue when you fall off the cache tier is you get higher latency. Uh, and, the, and so that's what I call the latency cliff. Now you might say, well, most of the time you're on, you're on the cash tier. Is it really a big deal? But I always think about the poor accountants who every Friday run some intensive report. And Monday through Thursday, they always get evicted off the cash tier, of course, because they, they didn't run that data set. So every time they run it, it's potential on these cyclical behaviors that you could get uh, substantially higher IO latency. And this, so there's certain things in the user experience that will be frustrating. But if we go to a two-tier two flash design like this, there's really no latency cliff. As you start pulling reads from this, you get great performance. So those are the advantages. We can, we can even out the user experience, create more determinism, and again, for the substantial body of IOs, we get, get memory, memory channel storage latencies. <clears throat> so I think of this next generation of vSAN as, as not necessarily pairing up SSDs and hard drives, it's about flash tiering. That's how Pure does it. They do the same thing, right? But that in an hour range. Yeah, yeah, yeah in exactly. So, so you see some of the uh, same trains in the industry. Yeah, People are it, what? thinking about doing this. Pure does the different tiers of flash. So I sort of jumped ahead here, uh, but we talked about cyclical events, yeah. more consistency on uh, uh, normal failed focus events. Uh, and, and so basically pairing 
having this great flash relativity. So that's what we expect to see on future versions of vSAN, uh, and that's some of the research work we're working on together between VMware and uh, Diablo. Yeah, and, uh, just to summarize it, these are the results that we see. We have here a uh, ESX stock, you're probably familiar with that. On the second from the right, we see the device uh, latency, or the device um, response time. And uh, we are using here, in this case, it's so mm -hmm. hard to see. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you need to believe me. <laughs> for about uh, almost uh, 10K um, uh, commands, or 10K IOPS, we get a latency uh, Fair, fair enough latency in comparison with PCA. With PCA, for this amount of, uh, of uh, IOPS, we saw uh, about half, uh, double or triple of the latency. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but not only that, uh, I wanted to, see, to show you also how does it look like on the, on the data tier. On this case, we fake the system, we tube the system, and we, uh, we, tra we uh, change the, the, the SSD, the TLC SSD, uh, to look like an HDDs. And we got very nice uh, uh, device latency on those uh, SSDs uh, uh, for the data tier. So power, we are testing this for power users' uh, workloads, and we got uh, above, above the three for score B on the VDI workload. Uh, that's it. Yep, so I think we've kind of covered everything that we want to go over today. Thank everyone for participating. I think we're kind of running up on time, so. That will close. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.